and action. What's up guys? Joe Munoz, one step prep.com. Quick question before we get into the video. Do you like my tie? Okay, we got the rubber chicken tie going on here and hang on a second folks. It gets, it gets better. Check out the socks. What? Come on. Check out the socks, folks, courtesy of my aunt. Thank you very much for the Christmas gift. Hope you guys are doing well, you and your family. Joe here, OneStepPrep.com. I want to talk to you today about the 320 side stick relationship and why it may feel a little bit different for those of you transitioning into the A320 coming from an aircraft that doesn't have flight control laws. Now, before I get any further, I just want to later on share with you the story of the chicken. I'll share with you the origin story. If you're watching this right now and you've never seen this channel and you're like, man, they're going to talk about some serious flight control laws, but they got a rubber chicken. Okay. I'm going to share with you all this stuff. We like to have fun here at onestepprep.com, but putting that aside, we'll revisit that at a later time. Let's talk about the flight control laws in the 320. We have several laws. Okay. We're going to start with normal law. Normal law is what we're normally in. And in normal law, we have several protections. It starts with G-load, G-load protection. We have pitch protection. We have roll protection. We have what we like to refer to as alpha protections. And we also have speed protection. So we should have, let's see, two, four, five. Those are my five protections. Apart from that, as we go through the different laws in sequence, as they degrade, we go from normal to alternate to direct, and then finally the last one, the forgotten law, abnormal, all right, attitude. I'm writing fast, chicken scratch, because I got a lot to share with you, okay? Abnormal attitude law. These are your four laws. Mechanical backup is not a law. It's the absence of all laws. Talk about all that in the A320 Ground School online. Now, here's what I want to share with you. The side stick relationship in each one of these is different. Let's focus in on normal law, because that's normally where we're flying. In normal law, the side stick relationship, okay, for the pitch axes, okay, for the pitch axes is G load. Let me be clear on this. This means that when you have an elevator input or a side stick input, better said, I have a side stick input for nose up command. Really what I'm doing is I'm taking the side stick and I'm commanding or I'm telling the ELAC, elevator aileron computer, typically ELAC number two is the one that drives my elevator. I'm telling the elevator aileron computer number two that what I want is, in the case of a nose up side stick deflection, I want a positive G change and therefore it's going to move the elevator in a nose up direction for a positive G change. Likewise, if I go forward, you could guess the complete opposite would happen. I'm now commanding a negative G change and that would be basically nose down elevator. Now, contrary to say a Boeing, or those of you transitioning from GA or from really any other aircraft, where you typically have a direct communication to the flight control surface. So I apply aft control column input, the elevator moves up proportionate to the amount of aft input. Here in the Airbus, what actually happens is we, as I mentioned earlier, we command to an elevator aileron computer a positive G change, which basically translates into elevator nose up. Now, the reason this is kind of interesting is because let's say that you have the side stick in a neutral position. You're commanding no G change, which means no elevator movement. Or in the case of a roll axis, if it's neutral, it would be no roll movement. Now, what's interesting there is I'm going to give you a scenario now whereby uh, let's kind of clean this up a little bit. By the way, if any of this does not make sense, please leave it in comments below. Rewind. Play it again. As we like to say, push, play, learn the easy way here with your friends and training program, Success One and Joe. Here's my jet, okay? And, and let's say just for the sake of conversation, number one engine fails, number two is still pushing, and what's going to happen now is the aircraft is going to yawn, it's going to roll in the direction of the dead engine, but because the side stick is in neutral when this happens, let's say you didn't, you didn't put a side stick input, you just left it neutral. What's going to happen is the aircraft interprets your neutral side stick as no roll desired. And so the aircraft is naturally going to yaw and roll because of the engine failure, but the side stick input that's neutral is commanding no roll. So if you actually bring up the flight control page on the lower systems display, you would see that the aircraft is actually inputting a flight spoiler and aileron input to stop the aircraft from rolling so that it actually follows the no roll command from the side stick. 
And this is because in the roll axis, the aircraft is actually re receiving roll rate inputs from the side stick as opposed to a direct communication from the aileron. Let me try to simplify this again. Just as I said for the elevator, here's my side stick. In the case of the ailerons, when I apply an aileron input, ELAC number one is going to get the job done. I'm going to apply this input. If I go full input, it's 15 degrees per second roll rate on either side. That's going to be sent to the ailerons right back here. And the ailerons now are going to deflect either up or down as appropriate to roll. But I'm commanding a rate of roll. I'm not specifically saying deflect left aileron up or right aileron down or vice versa. Now this side stick relationship of G load and the pitch axis and roll rate in the roll axis is specific to the 320. And as we go through the degradation of laws from alternate down to uh, later on direct abnormal attitude, we're going to see differing side stick relationships. It could be G load roll rate, it could be G load direct, it could be direct direct. There's different configurations and there's different reasonings as to why you would want those configurations. All right. Now, the part of the reason we want it in normal law, G load and roll rate, is because, as you saw earlier, the protections that we have, G load protection, and also we have roll protection, we have several other protections, but primarily the G load protection is the one I want to focus in on here. The aircraft won't let you pull more than 2.5 Gs if we're clean. And therefore, one of the great ways that it can accomplish this is by having this relationship with an ELAC and a side stick where it's actually commanding a G load instead of a direct relationship to the elevator. We talk more about this in detail, folks, and when I say in detail, I say literally there's a cheat sheet that you can download in our online ground school. This whole whiteboard is covered in stuff by myself going through. These are the protections, Alpha Prod, Alpha Floor, uh, uh, Alpha Max, how you can get there, what it is, why it exists, how to get out of Toga Lock, which is a byproduct of Alpha Floor. Then we go into alternate law. What are the stabilities that you have there? Some of the protections. What do you have in uh, a direct law? What do you have in abnormal attitude law? None of the laws. Mechanical backup. How do you get there? What do I have there? What is it going to look like? What is it going to feel like? How do I control the aircraft? All that stuff we answer for you there. So I really, really hope that you reach out to us at the number one, onesteppprep.com, and you would like to work with us on video. Now, also, I want to share with you the story of this rubber chicken. For those of you that are wondering, where, what's the story on this thing, okay? Many years ago, I've been teaching sims and ground schools and fixed base sims and full flight sims and all kinds of stuff. I've been teaching for, uh, let me see, I just turned 30. And my teaching career, believe it or not, started when I was 19. So a little over 10 years, going on 11 years now, okay, that I've been teaching. In one of the full flight sim events, I had a rubber chicken in my bag for whatever reason. And we were doing a midnight to four sim. We were coming up at 2.30 a.m. The, the crew was a little tired, to say the least. So we're rolling down the runway. I program a bird strike in the sim. I pop the rubber chicken out. And right when we got to V1 and they saw the birds coming in the visuals, I went, boom! And I threw the rubber chicken at them. And of course, it was a great laughing moment. It brought everybody back to life. It really engaged us back into the lesson. And we had a great time. And it became a talking point. And from there, it also became sort of a mascot, OK, for one step prep. I mean, to the degree that my aunt got me a tie and a pair of socks. So that's how we train here. Super fun. Super energetic, very family environment. We like to simplify the complex, make you feel at home because you are at home with us here. We genuinely mean that. And so with that being said, I really hope that you reach out to us here to do something with us, whether it's online, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person. It's an interview prep. It's an oral prep. You want a full-blown type rating. You want an FAA ATP license. We can hook you up. You want to remove a circling restriction from an existing license that you have. Call us up there's probably a good chance we'll be able to do something with you. Now, we focus primarily on 7.3 and 320, but we have instructors for 7.6, 7.4, 7.7, CRJ, ERJ. And you may not be working directly with me on some of these other fleet types, 7.3 and A320 uh, are my two specialties, so to speak. But we, we like to put solutions together because we're accompanied by pilots, four pilots. I'm a pilot myself. I fly for a low-cost carrier here in the U.S. Uh, very much enjoy that and very much enjoy training and interacting with uh, people like yourself. So look forward to working with you. Joe Mignon's name, OneStepPrep.com. We'll see you in another video.